Hey yard nerds, it is a beautiful day in Southeast Louisiana. It's finally starting to feel like fall. And today, I'm really excited to unbox and swatch this Etcher watercolor set for you guys. I purchased this on Amazon and I'll have links and show notes down in the description below for you guys. So, let's get to it. Hey there art nerds, today we're taking a look at the Etcher Lab watercolor half pan set. This is a student grade set that was originally being kind of sort of marketed as though they were professional grade watercolors, but due to some mm, pointed reviews, Etcher has had a chance to rethink that and change how they're going about marketing these. So I had a poll up on both Twitter and my community tab, and you guys voted for this review over the See Me Art review. So you guys will see the See Me Art review next. So let's go ahead unwrap it, talk about it, swatch it, and get to it. So this 24 piece half pan set was purchased for $48 on Amazon, or if you'd rather give your money to Etcher directly, you can pay $49.50, and I'll have links to both of those down in the description below. And this isn't my first time reviewing an Etcher product. You guys might remember I reviewed the mini palettes a while back, and I've eyed the satchels for a few years, but I've had difficulty justifying pulling the trigger on the price point. I have mixed feelings about Etcher as a company in general. While several of their products seem promising, they all seem overpriced and their watercolors promise big. I remember when they were kickstarting these watercolors and at first I was hopeful because why kickstart something you aren't making or haven't personally designed? But once I realized these were probably student grade watercolors, I noped out of the kickstarter. And not only did they have a kickstarter, but they also had an Indiegogo campaign. If you guys are super art nerdy and curious about that, I'll link both of those in the description below, but as you guys can see, they were successful. And I tried to figure out who makes these watercolors because I am pretty sure Etcher is not making these watercolors as much as they make a big deal on their website about quality pigments and stuff. But I wasn't able to find out who they're getting them from. So if you know who Etcher is getting their watercolors from or who they're working with or we can figure it out together, let me know down in the comments below or come chat with me on my Discord server, The Paint Box. I'll have a link for that as well if you guys want to get super art nerdy with me. So Etcher offers three watercolor sets. This 48 piece set, a 12 piece metallic set that looks a lot like Paul Rubens and a 12 piece pearlescent set. And the photos on the website look like these were white labeled and as I just mentioned, possibly Paul Rubens. So according to the site, these are hand picked vegan friendly watercolors, which would mean they don't use honey and they don't include ox gall and none of the pigments are using like bug parts like carmine used to be made from insects, cochineal bugs I believe. So if they are vegan it would mean they don't include anything like that. So hand picked vegan friendly watercolors in a set of 24 half pans, premium student grade light fastness, transparency levels and color index names listed below and that's on their site and also according to their site. We thought it was about time a brand took the guesswork out of paint selection to deliver simply the best student grade watercolor paints directly to you. We spent over a year sourcing watercolors from all over the world. We then put every paint through countless rounds of rigorous testing by our panel of professional watercolorists and instructors. Finally, we handpicked the best paints that would be priced in the student grade category and put together a set that achieves what we set out to do. These, paint, these paints each exhibit the key characteristics that will help you develop as an artist, a wide array of palette choices and transparency levels, great light fastness, easy to mix with water, and pretty great level of pigmentation. So what that might lead us to believe is that they are sourcing from multiple companies, which could be the best of both worlds. You guys know from my Daily Driver palette, I love it when we pick the best from different brands to curate a palette that's actually the best for the artist using it. I'm not so sure Etcher did that. That's a lot of effort. I'm pretty sure they just picked a company and are working with them to white label these watercolors. Now we do have one big clue here as to the provenance of these watercolors, made in China, and to be fair, most everything is made in China these days, but that's a big clue that these might be the Paul Rubens watercolors or possibly superior watercolors. And then this is just the Amazon information, the barcode on the back. So it arrived to me wrapped in plastic, but we also get this 
fairly swanky cardboard box. The packaging has Etcher's branding on it. It says watercolor 24 half pan set and then in super tiny letters that are kind of difficult to read, premium student series. And then on the back, we have their colors and fear not, in my show notes, I will actually have the pigment information because they did list that on their site. Now, all of these, almost all of these colors have been renamed. I mean, we have colors like pure white, just yellow, mighty ochre, llama orange, soft orange, simply red, rogue red, sweet red, pretty pink, royal purple, lime green, leaf green, emerald green, ocean turquoise, uh, and I'm skipping all the normal names just to cherry pick the ones that are like not really super helpful, brick brown, power black, which doesn't, if you're familiar with watercolors, it's like makeup names. It doesn't really tell you much about the actual color you're getting. So you guys who have watched a lot of my reviews, you know I actually prefer when they just give them standard names, even though different brands are gonna use different pigments. It at least gives you a good idea if you're familiar with watercolor of what to expect. And if you're not familiar with watercolor, it also gives you a good idea. If you like these paints and you wanna try a different brand, it gives you a good idea of what similar colors you could get to kind of you know, duplicate what you've already found here. So, this looks to be a, how do you open? I thought it was a magnetic closure. So, I do wanna disclose that when I do these unboxing swatch reviews, I try to come into these as blind as possible so that other people's opinions do not bias my own. So if I'm missing, other than doing, you know, my research, so if I'm missing something glaringly obvious, be kind, let me know in the comments, but do keep in mind that I do try not to watch other reviews before I start these. Inside this super classy box, we have a card that reads, we believe art has the power to make this world a better place. That's why we want to help artists art. With your help, we've now delivered thousands of etcher bags, sketchbooks, palettes, and other peculiar inventions to artists all over the world. Thank you for joining us on this adventure. We hope you enjoy these watercolors. Smiley face, Ania and the etcher team. And then inside the box, it says, show us your art. Tag us with Etcher Paints on social media for a chance to win a monthly Etcher Art voucher. And then inside the box, this is this is where it gets really kind of Paul Rubens-y to me. Kind of reminds me of the first Paul Rubens palette I reviewed, which I hate to say it, I did not like the Paul Rubens half pan. So if these are rebranded Paul Rubens, hopefully I like this better. And look, it wants to stick to the box. So we have, I guess, a cleaning cloth. I have never, ever used the cleaning cloths, but that's okay. Because it's like a microfiber. It's like for cleaning tech. So we have a belly band. It says watercolor, 24 half pants set. It's already come unglued. Here is our light fast scale. So eight would be excellent. One would be poor. We have pigment transparency. So for those of you who are not quite familiar with what those little symbols mean, now you've got it. Inside is a metal palette. They they have a sticker. This is this is a sticker for their branding. So we've been looking at a lot of really nice metal branded palettes. It probably doesn't cost all that much more when you white label a product to get your branding on it. We've seen it with uh, the Rosa. We've seen it with people who have like white labeled Mungyo watercolors like Jane Davenport and Prima Marketing. And it's just one of those steps that would just go the extra mile to be like, yes, we care, and yes, I am gonna be hard on it. If it truly is white labeled Paul Rubens watercolors for $48, just get the Paul Rubens. I was about to move all this so we could focus on the palette, but this arrived damaged. That might be on Amazon's fault. That might be on Etcher, but you spend all this money on a nice box that has a nice magnetic clasp and it arrives broken, which is not something you necessarily wanna see. Inside our Tasty Metal palette, we have a accordion style swatch card. Seems like it's decent watercolor paper, maybe even a cotton rag. And it actually includes the color names and their opacity and light fastness. This is actually really handy because it means I don't have to scavenge all of the belly bands off these things. And as you guys know, that takes me forever. 
And we also have our 24 individually wrapped little half pans, friction fitted into this palette. And these look like they use minimal packaging. So, you know, good on Etcher. And this is also custom packaging. So you guys have noticed we have seen a lot of customized packaging for this. That's kind of why I was ragging on them for not screening the palette. It's just that one little extra step. There isn't a brush or paper or anything like that in this set, which might be something Etcher might want to reconsider considering their price point. Now on the half pans, you also get the opacity, you get the light fast information, and I hope, dang it, let me, let me adjust that. I hope you guys have good, oh goodness, I don't know if I can get it to focus. There we go. I hope you guys have good eyes because the light fastness is written on the star. It's a teeny tiny eight rather than like eight stars. So that's a little bit difficult to read. And uh, no further information other than color name, opacity, light fast, and pigment information. So I have 24 of these to unwrap. I'm gonna do that in time lapse and then we'll start swatching these watercolors. The colors and pigments in this pigment are Pure White PW6, it's opaque, Lemon Yellow PY3, semi-transparent, Just Yellow PY35, opaque, Mighty Ochre PY42, opaque, Llama Orange PY150, semi-opaque, Soft Orange PO20, opaque, Simply Red PR108, transparent, Rogue Red PR177, semi-opaque, Sweet Red, PR123, transparent, Pretty Pink, PV19, transparent, Royal Purple, PV23, transparent, Lime Green, PG36 and PY74, semi-transparent, Leaf Green, PG17, transparent, Emerald Green, PG7, transparent, Ocean Turquoise, PY101 and PB17, transparent, Ultramarine Blue, PB29, transparent, but Prussian Blue, PB27, semi-transparent. Sky Blue, PB15 to a ratio of 3, semi-transparent. Oh, I apologize. Opaque. Sorry. Opaque. Cobalt Blue, PB28, transparent. Umber Brown, PR101 and PBR7, transparent. Brick Brown, PR101, opaque. Burnt Sienna, PBR7, transparent. Dark Brown, PBR7 and PBK7, transparent, and Power Black, PBK7, opaque. And these will be listed in the show notes. I definitely have to hand it for Etcher. The way they chose to wrap their half pans made it so much easier for me to get them unwrapped and to reuse the labels. So I guess that's up to you because usually when I reuse the labels, as you guys have seen with the Mungyo, it takes forever. And that was one of the fastest label reuse I've done in a while. That could, however, open these up to possibly absorbing atmospheric water. I didn't really notice any difference and I live in Southeast Louisiana, so maybe that's just an unfounded concern, especially if these don't contain any honey, since honey is a bit more hydrophilic, a bit more sticky, a bit more prone to turning soupy than gum arabic. So some of these pans seem to be a little bit underfilled, like this one here, that's Prussian blue, and all of them seem to be extruded, which means instead of like hand poured or filled from tubes or filled from a liquid, they are <laughs> extruded out as like a paste and then popped into the half pans after the fact. Me personally, I think I like the hand filled or the machine filled ones a little bit better then extruded, but there might be just such a negligible difference. I mean, these days I mostly work from filling my half pans with two watercolors and then letting them dry. So it could just be from that. I find that they reactivate a little bit easier and that the pigments activate a little bit easier, but it could all just be in my head. And these are just looking so much like the Paul Rubens half pans that I gotta go like dig and see if I actually still have that palette or if I donated it. So uh, stay tuned. To the end, obviously, because I'm going to try to do a comparison between these and the Paul Rubens half pans if I can find them.
So now that we have everything so nicely unwrapped and back in their palette, it's time to go ahead and swatch them the first time. We're gonna do two swatches today. Swatch them the first time on their included swatch sheet, and then I'll swatch them again on my standard, the one I swatch all of my watercolors on, the Blick Studio Cotton Rag Block. So I'm gonna do this in time lapse. Each half pan was wrapped similar to the Rosa Galleria with an adhesive sticker so there's no foil and no extra plastic and since the pigment info and life fast opacity info are all on the swatch card I don't actually need to save those plastic wrappers but I saved it anyway because it's easier to remove and restick and less waste I guess and the half pans themselves didn't have any markings or provenance the paints are extruded and have a shiny surface and some of the pans seem to be a little under so swatching on the included swatch sheet. I found this out at the end of the review, but this is actually a sample of their own cotton rag paper and I'll talk about that a bit more later on. But I do think that's a smart inclusion and I do like that they've included the names and pigment info all here on this swatch sheet. It's not exactly handy as a color map, but it is a useful reference and I'm glad I don't have to write it out. So the colors swatched clean and bright. The paper they included is decent and reflects the color well. There seems to be some granulation to the colors themselves and while they do muddy the water somewhat, it's a fair amount, it's a normal amount for student grade watercolors. So I'm not really displeased with these at all. these swatched surprisingly well. Colors have good intensity. Everything activated fairly readily. There weren't any really known issues, at least from these swatches. And the paper they included is pretty decent. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this and we can start our second swatch test. The swatch test that's really going to tell me what I need to know. We're gonna be testing for liftability. We're gonna be testing for opacity. We're gonna be testing for granulation. We're gonna be testing for how the colors wash out. So let me grab my paper and we can go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be doing my second set of swatches on my de facto, the standard art control, the Blick Studio Cotton Rag Cold Press Watercolor Block. This is a cotton rag paper that's designed to stay tight, to stay taut since it's block bound on all four sides. So we're not gonna have any problems with it buckling or kipping or anything that might affect how the paint actually goes down on the paper. And since I use this for pretty much all of my watercolor unbox and swatch tests, it gives us a really good control, something standardized that we can use to judge our watercolors against. I'm using an alcohol marker to help demonstrate opacity with these watercolors. Usually I would use a Copic, but everything is still packed up from the move. So instead I'm using a Mexby marker. I have noticed that some watercolors interact with it strangely. So you may notice some color distortion. I apologize for that. I also pre-activated the watercolors with some clean water to give them their best chance at activation. So swatching, I'm going to be looking for muddiness. I'm going to be looking at opacity. I'm going to be looking at granulation. I'm going to be looking at how well they wash out. I'm going to be looking at how quick to activate they are. And in general, I'm looking at how the colors go down versus how they dry. Cheaper student grade watercolors, often you get some really nice color while they're still wet and they basically dry to chalk. So that's something I'm definitely going to be looking at. I'm also going to be showing you guys my rinse cup so we can use that as a gauge for how muddy or how full of optical brighteners these are because the quicker your paints pollute the water, the more they're probably full of extenders and fillers. And I apologize for the weird lighting. We're still getting things kind of figured out and I'm still in a temporary studio setup. So things are not quite what I'd hope for them to be. Now, I noticed that the colors swatch clean and bright. The paper they included is decent and, oh, sorry, wrong part of my notes. So I got very similar results when swatching on my paper as I got with the etcher paper, which makes sense as both of them are a cotton rag watercolor paper. 
I also noticed no significant color shift as the watercolors dried. So for my second set of swatches, same thing actually. The only thing I'm not necessarily able to see right now, but we'll test that out a little bit, is how these actually handle wet and to wet and washing out since all of these, the color really migrated quite a bit. But there are a few granulating colors. The opacity isn't too bad. Some of these are, you know, fairly opaque, but you do want to see variable opacity in a watercolor set, or at least I do. And then the, oh, I forgot what they called it, but their black is actually more of a really dark Payne's gray. You can even see how it granulated out a bit with some ultramarine blue, and I actually really like that. That is an unusual inclusion. So I'm really starting to rethink that this might be repackaged Paul Rubens, but now I'm wondering who makes these paints. So if you guys know, let me know, because Etcher sure isn't gonna let us know who's making them. So next, I wanna do some color mixing. We're going to do optical mixing, where we layer our colors, and we're gonna do atomic mixing, where we actually mash our colors together to get a secondary color. To demonstrate color mixing, I'm gonna go ahead and reactivate our watercolors, and I'm gonna start by laying down the basis for my optical mixes. So we're gonna have our cool yellow, our warm yellow, our cool red, our warm yet red, our cool blue, our warm blue. And with this 24 color set, it really wasn't hard to find those. And I got that reversed, by the way, we're doing warm yellow, cool yellow, etc. So while that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and start on our atomic mixing, where we basically mix two colors together and make a secondary color. And I noticed that there's some really nice mixes that don't really desaturate too much. And granulation is more noticeable with the atomic mixes than with the swatches. So to start with, I'm gonna to try to make several different oranges, several different greens, several different purples, using different combinations of cool versus warm colors to make that. And this is really important because when you're working with student grade watercolors, there's going to be colors that you're going to want, like skin tones or variations of certain colors. And the ability to mix those colors, both through glazing and by actually combining the two colors to make a third color, to me is really important. Yes, there are larger student grade palettes out there on the market with 96 colors. In fact, I'm gonna be reviewing one of those next. Um, and they do give you a lot of colors, but there is no way that even a large palette can give you every single color you might possibly want to use. So I think doing some color mixing and seeing how cleanly the color is mixed is a really important area to test for and it allows me to actually talk about the watercolors. Now, of course, this is the unbox and swatch. It's gonna give you guys a lot of information about these paints, but it is not the end all be all. I do have a follow-up standalone field test where I basically paint an entire watercolor illustration and I use that and the information that I garner in this review to be able to give you guys a much more definitive idea of how well these paints might work for you. So if you're new to my work, if you've never checked it out before, if you're new here, hi, welcome. Hopefully you guys will check out my art. Uh, I have a more cartoony art style and I paint watercolor comics. So when I'm reviewing art supplies, it's really from the eyes of a cartoonist and how well these might suit me in the comics that I paint. So hopefully this is useful for you guys. I like to capture the drying in hyperlapse to show you guys whether or not there's any significant color shift. So now that our uh, optical mix, the first set has dried, we can actually go over it with the second layer. And I did notice that there's some color movement, but not as much as I'd noticed with the Rosa Galleria and the Mungio paints. I feel like the true test for these watercolors is going to be with the field test that I mentioned earlier. So one thing I really notice is that these seem to get used up pretty quickly. And since they aren't sold open stock by Etcher and they aren't revealing their source and don't necessarily use standard or similar names to popular professional and student grade watercolors, 
this just shortens the lifespan of this paint, these paints and this palette to me. These are standard half pan size and this is a standard palette so it can take replacement half pans or you could refill them from tubes. But I think this is something you should be aware of before buying these watercolors for yourself if you're new to watercolor or for an aspiring artist. So for the paints that don't that aren't using standard names, I will get back to you guys with what I think a close approximation would be in case you do have this palette and you would like to refill it with something similar. So next we're going to do the lift test and that is pretty straightforward. We're gonna use a synthetic watercolor brush, a cup of clean water and some paper towels. And I'm basically just going to do this. I'm going to gently scrub a little bit We'll see how much it reactivates, a little bit of reactivation. I'll also see how much it lifts. And I'm gonna do that for all the colors. Not all the colors lift uniformly, but most are pretty staining. Some of the colors I thought would be more prone to lifting, like the yellow ochre, are surprisingly staining, in fact. Not all colors lift uniformly, but most are pretty staining. Some, some of the colors I thought would be more prone to lifting, like the yellow ochre over here, are surprisingly staining. So finally, we're gonna do our wet into wet test, and that's really just to kind of see how the pigments disperse, how the colors disperse, and how well they might work into in a kind of wet into wet color mixing situation. And this is something I've recently added to my reviews ever since that Mia field test that kind of burned me because the more information I can gather about how these paints are gonna handle, the better job I can do during the field test and the more information I can give you guys when you're making your purchasing decisions. So for this test, I'm starting by saturating my cotton rag watercolor paper with just clean water. I wanna see how well the paints actually diffuse on this paper. The granulation really stands out when you do wet into wet, particularly with the Prussian blue, emerald green, and ultramarine. And the colors seem to disperse nicely on this paper. Now, I do this test because I got really burnt by Mia and I find that I do better when I do the field test when I actually know what to expect from the watercolors and I have a good idea of what they're capable of and where they're going to fall short. So also it just gives me a chance to play with the paints and to demonstrate them for you guys and we can see what they're capable of. So I would like to compare it against my Paul Rubens half pans because the further I go along with this, the less I'm certain this is, you know, just a rebrand of that particular 24 pan palette. But I can't find my original Paul Rubens half pan set because probably I donated. I went digging through my art supplies since we're still all packed up and I couldn't find it. So I think I donated it. But I love the Paul Rubens tubes so much. I want to give them a redemption arc anyway because I bought the first set on Wish. So keep an eye out for an art supply redemption for the Paul Rubens half pants. And then if there's interest, I'll actually be able to compare this set against the Paul Rubens. So what about the pros and cons? Well, for the pros, it's a nice color selection, particularly that power black. I really like how it granulates out into a blue. And these handle decently well. They're honestly kind of unremarkable. There's nothing really terrible, but also nothing really great about these particular paints. Now the half pans are refillable. You can replace them with a standard size half pan, which is good. And the palette is just a standard black watercolor palette, similar to the Meaden palette, similar to most of the palettes we reviewed. So it is going to stand up to a lot of use. It's gonna stand up to the test of time. So you can reuse this palette long after you've used up these paints. But what about the cons? These are definitely student grade paints in that they pollute the water very quickly and they tend to get used up fast. They're definitely full of optical brighteners and other extenders. So they're probably not as economical as they may seem, especially compared to like the Rosa Galleria set, which I reviewed not too long ago. Now you only get 21 colors with the Rosa Galleria set. Actually, let me just grab that set for you guys. 
Okay, so here is the Rosa Galleria set that I reviewed not too long ago. Keep in mind, art nerds do get these reviews first. So this one was about $35 on Amazon, also comes in a metal pan. This is a much larger metal palette. And rather than half pans, like with the Etcher set here, we get full pans. These seem to be poured paint. So in my opinion, a little bit higher quality. And you get 21 pans rather than 24, but they're full size pans and you have room to expand. So if I was gonna, oh, also this is considered professional grade rather than student grade. So for your money, if I was gonna recommend you get one between the Etra set and the Rosa Gallery set, I would say go with the Rosa Gallery set. It's $10 cheaper, it's just way nicer. I mean, honestly, only the field test will truly tell and I may be singing a totally different song after I field test both of them. But as it stands, the Rosa Galleria set is much nicer. Now, compared to the Mungyo set, which is a little bit cheaper than the Etra set, about the same price as the Rosa Gallery set, you get 48 half pans in the Mungyo set. Now I think you guys can see why I'm talking about, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot to screen your logo on a palette rather than just putting a black sticker on it. So this is a larger palette, similar in build to the Etcher one. Maybe they're getting them from the same manufacturer. <laughs> I look at this and I'm already laughing because it's like, oh yeah. I would say you're gonna be happier with the Etcher set than with the Mungyo set. The Etcher set, I believe, is higher quality than the Mungyo set. Not that the Mungyo set is terrible, and like I said, I might be singing a different song after the field test, but just with how the paints handled, comparing the two unboxing swatches, I would say the Etcher pets paints are better quality than the Mungyo paints, but they're also much more expensive and you get half the colors. So it kind of depends on what you're looking for when it comes to student grade watercolor. But you know, on that note, I have so many student grade watercolor reviews here on the channel. I've got the unboxing swatches where we do what we did today. And I also have field tests where I actually put them to the test using real world conditions to decide if these watercolors are the right fit for me and the right fit for you guys. Cause it's really important to me to help you guys make art a habit. And a great way to do that is to demystify art supplies and make them more accessible and be able to have some affordable options to recommend when people are just looking to get started with a new medium. So, Ah, where I'm at with the Etcher set now, y'all, I think it's overpriced. The box is nice, the belly band is nice, but I think it's overpriced. So on that note, earlier on, I promised you guys my best guesses to the strangely named colors. And what I did for this is I kind of went with my own experience and also for the ones that I was like kind of on the fence about, I went ahead and I looked up the pigment numbers and selected a pigment formulation that was similar to what we're seeing here. So this is just in fun, but this is also kind of to help you guys find something that'll work should you use up the rest of your etcher colors. So just yellow, I would say that's a new gamboge. Mighty ochre is a yellow ochre. Llama orange looks to me like a cadmium orange. Soft orange is a transparent orange. Simply red, it could be a Windsor red um, or even a vermilion. It's a little bit cool to be a vermilion, so maybe closer to Windsor red. Rogue red looks like an alizarin crimson. Sweet red looks like a quin red, kind of like the Holbein cherry red. Pretty pink looks to me like a Quinn magenta. Royal purple is a dioxine purple. Lime green looks like it could be um, kind of a, a warmer, no, I'm sorry, a cooler sap green or maybe even a spring green. Leaf green is almost a chromium green, especially when you look at that granulation and opacity. Emerald green is definitely more of a phthalo green and not so much of a viridian green because viridian green has the struggles, struggles to activate. Ocean turquoise looks like a cobalt turquoise. Sky blue looks like a cerulean blue. Uh, brick brown looks like an Indian red or a Venetian red, closer to a Venetian red. Dark brown looks like a sepia. And power black looks like it would be a lamp black or an ivory black. Fine feathers do not always make fine birds. And I think that's definitely the case with this Etcher palette. The paints themselves are fine, but all of the showmanship around this palette, this sort of gift box that they've got here, 
the wrapper for what? To polish your palette. All of these are nice inclusions, but I don't necessarily feel like they justify the price or they make the price, you know, oh, they actually say what the paper this was. Huh. Okay, let's see. This is the same paper we use in our Etcher Cold Press Sketchbook. So it's 100% cotton, 300 grams, and vegan friendly, which would mean it is not using any animal-based gelatin for the sizing. Okay, now we know what the paper is. So, all right, I do appreciate though that, wait, this was supposed to go. <laughs> I do appreciate that they included a cotton rag paper for swatching because I do feel like cotton rag paper kind of brings out the best in watercolors as we definitely saw in our Cool Bank unbox and swatch. But like I was saying, you know, fine feathers do not always make fine birds. And I think this is a really good example of that. They have some nice inclusions, but there's also some limitations about this palette that just doesn't really justify the price point for me. They're not bad watercolors. They're not bad watercolors, but they're student grade watercolors and they definitely, they definitely are student grade watercolors. You know what I mean? Uh, you're gonna use them up faster. They have a lot of optical brighteners in them and they turn the water to mud quicker. So you're gonna need to rinse your water. And it does seem like you are rinsing more paint away just from them globbing up on the brush, like student grade paints have a tendency to do, then you know, you're actually using. So to me, when you do student grade, it's often a false economy. Now there are some great student grade watercolors out there, like the Mei Liang pigments, which I bring up. It's become my gold standard, what can I say? I happen to really like it. Or that weird superior folding palette, also great. They're like half the price and then some of this. So they're around $20, this is $45, it's just, it's hard for me to not remind you guys of the price because it's not bad, but it's not worth the price. And the fact that Etcher doesn't have refills on their site and isn't giving away their source, but at least they do give us their pigment information. So I gotta be grateful for that. But those are two big hurdles that I don't think I can overlook just because it comes in a fancy magnetic box that was broken upon arrival. So I definitely hope you guys will stick around and stay tuned for the upcoming field test where I use these paints to paint a watercolor illustration in my style. <laughs> I actually forgot. So hi, if you're new here, I'm Becca. I'm a watercolor comic artist. I paint the webcomic Seven Inch Kara. I hope you guys will read it over at sevenincharacom If you're more a fan of the dead tree format, i.e. books, you can order your own copies at sevenincharacom slash shop. I'll have a link down in the description for you guys, as well as links to where you can get this, should you decide you want it, as well as my show notes for this review. So hopefully, if you haven't yet subscribed, you'll hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification so that YouTube fingers crossed, will let you know when I update. But hey, if YouTube is not sending you notifications, because I update twice a week, so you should be hearing from me twice a week with watercolor and arty goodness. If you're not hearing from me twice a week, I really hope you guys will consider checking out my Patreon page because once a week I share a free newsletter where I list everything that's gone live during that week. And that can be a great way to keep on top of what's actually going on here. So if you are missing out on my updates, I hope you guys will consider heading over to patreon.com slash soup and shoot if you're feeling generous and you really 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 like my art supply reviews if you help find them helpful useful and informative if you find my tutorials to be inspiring maybe just maybe you can join the ranks of my hallowed art nerds over on patreon it really would mean a lot to me and a little goes a long way so art nerds what do you guys think of the etcher student grade watercolor set i think it's got a lot in favor of it but I feel like Etcher maybe paid a lot of attention to the branding and not as much attention to the paints or the paint feel. <laughs> For about $45, I would have liked this set to at least have come with a water brush or a traditional watercolor brush. Instead, it just comes with a lot of paper and a lot of branding. We do get 24 vibrant colors but I'm not sure how well these are gonna handle in a real world illustration setting. So you guys are gonna have to stay tuned to the field test to find out what I really think of the Etcher student grade watercolors. <laughs>